Hello, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle haven't had an easy year, but their marriage appears to still be very strong. The royals have been caught up in several scandals in 2019, some of which have affected royal relationships. But through it all, Meghan and Harry seem to come out on top. Here's why they arguably have the strongest relationship in the royal family. Meghan and Harry have been at the center of a media storm this year. Ever since Meghan and Harry tied the knot, the media has been doing its best to create a negative image for the couple. Meghan has had many negatively angled articles published about her, with rumors ranging from a bad relationship with Kate Middleton to poor treatment of her staff. And the public has bought into the rumors about the two. Those who closely follow the Sussex Royal Instagram have likely noticed there are many negative comments under the images Meghan and Harry post. Commercial, I spend 99% yeah. of my, my life traveling the world by commercial. Um, occasionally, occasionally there needs to be an opportunity based on a unique circumstance um, to, to ensure that my family uh, are safe. Um, and, it's, and it's generally as simple as that. But as I said in my speech, for me, what it is is about balance. And if I have to do that, not a decision that I would want to take, um, but if I have to do that, then I will ensure, as I have done previously and I will continue to make sure that I do, uh, is, to, is to balance out that impact that I have. And I've always offset my CO2. Um, I think part of, the, part of the, the group discussion here that we had earlier was, you know, what, is, what is offsetting C, uh, CO2? There are so many people out there that, that hear about it, that don't know about it. In my mind, it's the, it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. And we need to make it cool. Um, but it, it can't just be a ticking the box exercise. They've been challenged, yet they've never faltered in their love for each other. The two haven't had an easy year, but despite the negativity, their relationship seems just as strong as when it started. Megan has had a difficult time adjusting to the spotlight, though she's done a pretty incredible job of it. She is still trying to figure out how to manage such an important role and not take the negativity to heart but she and Harry have remained thick as thieves through their entire first year and a half together. The couple welcomed their first child, Archie, in May, and they've taken on the challenge of navigating parenthood in the spotlight. The two also took a monumental tour of Southern Africa, though their high-profile lawsuit, which was announced upon their return, took away from some of the good they did on their trip. Today is International Day of the Girl. Every girl has potential. She has promise. She has the right to learn, the right to be heard, the right to play and to discover, the right to be exactly who she is. It is said that girls with dreams become women with vision. The two know when to take a break. Meghan and Harry know when to spend some alone time with each other. For many, the idea of taking a break from work is not a good one. But for Harry and Meghan, it's necessary. Meghan retreated from the spotlight to enjoy her maternity leave in peace over the summer, which likely helped the two of them with parenting. Plus, their little family has chosen to take an extended holiday break and has retreated from the spotlight once again. Meghan and Harry's relationship has remained so strong because they know what they have to do to nurture it. They don't overwork themselves and always put each other first, which has helped them build something many other couples don't have. Ho ho ho! Hi guys, everyone at Scully's Little Soldiers. I hope you're having an amazing time. I hear there's 190 of you uh, there this year, so please cause as much... I just met my now husband. My friends were really happy because I was so happy, but my British friend said to me, I'm sure he's great, but you shouldn't do it because the British tabloids will destroy your life. And I very naively, I'm American, we don't have that there. What are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. I'm not in tabloids. I didn't get it. So it's, um, yeah, it's been complicated. 
their body language shows they have a serious connection. Is their actions worn enough to say they're the strongest royal couple? Their body language is. Body language experts have said on many occasions that Harry and Meghan's physical actions toward each other reflect a strong, confident relationship. Though William and Kate have hardly shown any distance in their marriage, they did recently spark conversation when Kate was seen shrugging her husband away as he tried to touch her shoulder. Meghan and Harry have learned how to care for their marriage in a way that has given them a lasting relationship. Their ability to stick by each other and take a break when needed, along with their general joy and physical connection when around each other, proves they will be married for many years to come. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are enjoying some much-needed time away from the spotlight. After a whirlwind year that involved welcoming their son Archie Harrison into the world, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex opted out of Queen Elizabeth's traditional royal festivities at Sandringham Estate. Instead, the pair have left the UK behind to spend some quality time as a family and with Markle's mother, Doria Ragland. It's been a especially trying time for Markle, who has been bullied and harassed in the press. After leaving her home in the United States and her career as an actress, the Los Angeles native hasn't exactly been widely accepted by the British press and the public. The frenzy surrounding the Duchess and the many rules and regulations of the royal family made Markle and Prince Harry decide to spend Christmas elsewhere. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are spending Christmas in Canada. When she filmed her hit series Suits from 2011 to 2017, Canada became Markle's second home. One of the Duchess' best friends, Jessica Maroney, and her family live in Canada. Also, the country doesn't have the drama and paparazzi that you find in the US and in the UK LMT channel has reported that the Sussexes had been in Canada for the entire hiatus and that Michael's mom and a few friends have joined them for Christmas. As has been reported, their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are spending private time in Canada, a royal spokesperson confirmed to royal reporter Omid Scobie. The decision to base themselves in Canada reflects the importance of this Commonwealth country to them both. Whilst this email confirms the country they are taking their family time in, for security reasons, we will not be releasing any further details and request that their privacy is respected. Canada is extremely important to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The Sussexes didn't just choose Canada on a whim. When they were secretly dating, they spent a great deal of time in Toronto. Scobie explained, this is a place where the romance got to grow between the pair at the beginning. Harry and Meghan spent a lot of time in Toronto while Meghan was working on suits. It was one of the few places that the two could go about in public unnoticed, even in Meghan's neighborhood. People didn't go running to the press. It's a place they can really enjoy privacy, so it's not surprised they have got back there for a private celebration. The pair have even gotten a warm welcome from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Prince Harry, Meghan, and Archie, we're all wishing you a quiet and blessed stay in Canada, he tweeted. You're among friends and always welcome here. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were afraid to stay in the UK for Christmas. The drama surrounding Markle aside, the Sussexes were afraid to stay in the UK for Christmas because of baby Archie. Attending Queen Elizabeth's Sandringham activities would mean missing out on the baby royal's first Christmas. At the Queen's estate, the little royals are separated from the adults for a good portion of the time. You have to remember Sandringham is quite a formal affair, Scooby explained to CBC Canada. On Christmas Day, when the family gets together for Christmas lunch, Children are separated from the parents. They have their own celebration in the royal nurses so the Sussexes wouldn't have sent as much time with Archie as they would have liked. 
this is going to be much more laid-back surroundings and Megan has a lot of friends in Toronto. As a child, I never imagined that one day a man would walk on the moon. Yet this year we mark the 50th anniversary of the famous Apollo 11 mission. It's still looking very good. Here you go. The eagle has landed. As those historic pictures were beamed back to Earth, millions of us sat transfixed to our television screens as we watched Neil Armstrong taking a small step for man and a giant leap for mankind, and indeed for womankind. It's a reminder for us all that giant leaps often start with small steps. This year we marked another important anniversary, D-Day. On the 6th of June 1944, some 156,000 British, Canadian and American forces landed in northern France. It was the largest ever seaborne invasion and was delayed due to bad weather. I well remember the look of concern on my father's face. He knew the secret D-Day plans but could of course share that burden with no one. For the 75th anniversary of that decisive battle, in a true spirit of reconciliation, those who had formerly been sworn enemies came together in friendly commemorations either side of the channel, putting past differences behind them. Such reconciliation seldom happens overnight. It takes patience and time to rebuild trust, and progress often comes through small steps. Since the end of the Second World War, many charities, groups and organizations have worked to promote peace and unity around the world, bringing together those who have been on opposing sides. By being willing to put past differences behind us and move forward together, we honor the freedom and democracy once won for us at so great a cost. The challenges many people face today may be different to those once faced by my generation. But I have been struck by how new generations have brought a similar sense of purpose to issues such as protecting our environment and our climate. My family and I are also inspired by the men and women of our emergency services and armed forces. And at Christmas we remember all those on duty at home and abroad who are helping those in need and keeping us and our families safe and secure. 200 years on from the birth of my great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, Prince Philip and I have been delighted to welcome our eighth great-grandchild into our family. Of course, at the heart of the Christmas story lies the birth of a child, a seemingly small and insignificant step overlooked by many in Bethlehem. But in time, through his teaching and by his example, Jesus Christ would show the world how small steps taken in faith and in hope can overcome long-held differences and deep-seated divisions to bring harmony and understanding. Many of us already try to follow in his footsteps. The path, of course, is not always smooth and may at times this year have felt quite bumpy, but small steps can make a world of difference. As Christmas dawned, church congregations around the world joined in singing It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Like many timeless carols, 
It speaks not just of the coming of Jesus Christ into a divided world many years ago, but also of the relevance, even today, of the angel's message of peace and goodwill. It's a timely reminder of what positive things can be achieved when people set aside past differences and come together in the spirit of friendship and reconciliation. And as we all look forward to the start of a new decade, it's worth remembering that it is often the small steps, not the giant leaps, that bring about the most lasting change. And so I wish you all a very happy Christmas. Stop.